Slovakia. I think uh, that's a big room for improvement there. We could um, maybe work together as horticulturalists and growers to uh, find a name that's more marketable, something that would uh, maybe bring this tree to the attention of the general public and help get it out there where people can get used to seeing it and, and using it. Uh, so in general, you know, uh, this, this tree uh, is going to work as a great alternative or replacement to trees like crab apple, flowering crab apple, uh, Japanese tree lilac, and other uh, smaller stature trees that have been used uh, quite widely in our urban forests. And I think uh, in the park setting, this would be a great choice for that. Uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, Imramakia doesn't have very good salt tolerance. In fact, it's very intolerant to road salt. So that really precludes its use uh, in the boulevard or on the roadside. So in general, to kind of sum this up, uh, this is a great uh, urban tree for a park or a, or a yard setting. Uh, nice, nice small size. Um, it's a relatively slow growing tree, so you have to be patient. Uh, beautiful uh, summer flowers and uh, you know, just a generally interesting and all around uh, unusual and cool tree. Following the popularity of Aymaki is a challenge for the nursery grower. And as you can see with this tree, it has been uh, really completely girdled by metal bowls last winter. It's tough for growers to grow and keep alive. It's going to be hard to get it out to the uh, end consumer. Uh, another variety that I didn't mention yet is the summertime Amramachia. And this is a University of Minnesota release. And um, again, to kind of give you a perspective uh, from the nursery grower, it's, it's not attractive like a uh, sugar maple or a red maple as a young tree. It uh, could be lumped in with trees like Kentucky coffee tree, which are sort of awkward as young trees. So again, just a couple of challenges to think about from the nursery grower's perspective. That